If you think the influence of Star Wars is great now, then it's unimaginable in the late 70s and early 80s. Every producer dusted off his own sci-fi pile that he had lying around as paperweight and said, what do we got? Among which we have some Roger Corman film Alien. Alien started off as just another monster flick like The Thing or something, so initially the producers were skeptical but they reworked it into one of the greatest horror films and one of the best sci-fi films by using some leftover Dune concept art and uh, being clever for once. It still does hold up, and not just because of the stellar effects, it's because the story works on three levels. Cabin in the Woods, Mansion Under a Storm, Polar Expedition, all considered cliches, all have the characters trapped. We feel most under pressure when we can't ask for help or when the help is so far away that there's no real point in asking them. This feeling of needing to deal with whatever problem you face is universal, no matter if you're American, Russian or the rest of the planet. You may be haunted by a ghost or trying to escape a mass murderer or just simply be stuck in an iceberg. Either way, this feeling is realistic enough for us to connect to the characters, because we all know the feeling of isolation except for Cabin in the Woods part. It keeps getting less and less realistic in the 5G era, which is part of the reason why that has become such a joke, while other forms of this cliché are still popular. Also, I guess the iceberg thing isn't very realistic anymore, but that's aside the point. Alien wears that cliché proudly on its sleeves. What happens next is pretty simple. You get a bunch of characters stuck on a location and they just get picked off one by one. The film has a handicap in the sense that the main characters can't really introduce themselves due to the fact that they've been colleagues for a while. Other monster flicks have the same issue and they try to avoid not having character is uh, by having them act very over the top. You want to convey the fact that one of the characters is a stoner, just have him have a bong and have him smoke in the first scene he's in. You want to convey that another character is sexually active, just have her dress up in revealing clothes and maybe dance or spin the bottle. What do you mean it makes little sense? These character introductions are at best unnatural and at worst horrible writing. Yet yeah, Chekhov's gun principle does not mean that every single character needs to be a setup. In Alien the dialogue is mundane as fuck, so it really feels like something a bunch of colleagues would say to each other, well, when you can hear what they're trying to say to each other. And the character revelations are a lot more spread out, I'm really happy about uh, this sort of uh, writing style having a bit of a comeback in Uncut Gems, I really wish there would be more films like it. I can't think of anything unrealistically stupid that the characters do except in this scene where Sigourney, despite earlier being paranoid at the sight of alien life, then goes to search for it after it goes missing with the door fully open. Yeah, that is a genuine set direction error, but those moments are rare. Sci-fi films used to have very sterile sets, but after Star Battle that started to change. Technology started becoming less idealistic and novel and more lived in and rusty. The characters treat the spaceship like a forklift. We no longer were looking forward to the future, but rather to the time when future has become the past, if that makes sense. And the gladiator guy duology of sci-fi films pretty much opened the door for cyberpunk genre to enter the mainstream. So in a way you can thank Alien for this glitchy mess, but also, Ghost in the Shell, so it wasn't that bad, but also Ghost in the Shell, so really was that bad. Sci-fi often shows aliens as either humanoid greys, humans with <laughs> bumps on their heads, or some indescribable mess. The truth is that if we ever do get to see an alien, they will most likely be more familiar than you think, but still strange due to something called convergent evolution. And the xenomorph does seem like something that could happen, especially with GMOs being a thing. The film starts off with an extended ship waking up sequence similar to 2001, but yet with its own identity. For the longest time we don't see any person on board and we explore the ship. In a way there is cold but life nevertheless on board, with the ship's computer, literally called Mother, waking up the crew and only this helmet seeing the screen still active even though nobody is on board. We see every detail of the set grounding the futuristic technology and making us comfortable just enough to get invested into the world our characters will inhabit in a bit. This is something that most filmmakers have forgotten about as they strive towards getting into the action as quickly as possible, but I really miss overtures. This is kinda like one.
Speaking of action, look out, an alien! Nah, I'm just kidding, that doesn't happen until 47 minutes into the film, so what happens instead? We get extended scenes of getting to know our characters in a natural way. Each character, except for Brad and Lambert, has been giving just enough depth so we don't get a sense on who's gonna bite the dust first. And what's important, we get a highly interesting mystery that should never be revealed on who the space jockey is and why was it carrying the eggs. H.R. Geiger's work is metallic yet human, recognizable yet twisted, sexual yet terrifying, and the creature is all of those things, and that's not just me reading into it. One thing that people are all disturbed about is sex, and that's how I'm going to attack the audience. I'm going to attack them sexually, and I'm not going to go after the women in the audience. I'm going to attack the men. The ship being called Mother giving birth to the astronauts is white and clean at first, but when it gets infected it becomes claustrophobic and as dark and unwelcoming as the place the xenomorph came from. Another great thing about this film is its mystery, and uh, this isn't one of the three levels so it doesn't get its own chapter, but we never get to know where the eggs came from, what happened to the ship and the space jockey, and the mystery is always better than the explanation, so why did Mr. Gladiator return to make another alien just to explain that the space jockey is actually some tall albino dude in cosplay, I'll never know, but it inspired me to make this channel. Now really, the first review I ever wrote was on Prometheus, but uh, it needs a little bit of reward, but I'll do it. In the meantime, check out my other videos, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, thanks!